Coming up on the DMT 1 to 1 show, episode 75, on the 17th of September 2014, an interview with Ian Hager, the CEO of the company Campaign Amp. This week's show is brought to you by Play MPE. Check out daily.plaympe.com for the latest Play MPE releases, charts, news, and more. And head to plaympe.com for more information on the company. We thank them for their support of Digital Music Trends. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT 1 to 1 show and it's a real pleasure today to welcome Ian Hager, the CEO and founder of Campaign Amp. So hi Ian, thanks for joining me, how's it going? Hi, yeah, very good, thank you. Thanks for having me, I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you and uh, I've been in touch with you guys for uh, quite a while. I think uh, I've seen you present at the Music 4.5 event uh, a few months back and so I've been interested in the company ever since. So first of all, uh, talk us through what Campaign Amp is in a sort of short pitch. Sure, okay, cool. Well, um, Campaign Amp is a project management and analytics platform um, that we've engineered specifically for music marketing and PR campaigns. Um, It's the only platform um, that combines uh, data, so an artist's most important campaign data, uh, alongside updates from the full team who are working on their campaigns into one place and basically serves that up. Uh, um, in, in the cloud across any device. Absolutely. Uh, so that's, Absolutely. that's what we do. And so uh, talk, talk me through sort of the, the process in setting up the company. Uh, what inspired you to, to start Campaign Amp and sort of what was your background before that? So, so my background was at uh, Ministry of Sound. Uh, I was there for 13 years. Um, I worked my way through their marketing team, started as a marketing assistant on the record label right. um, and worked my way through the record label. Um, and um, left in uh, 2012 um, as group managing director and over that period had managed uh, marketing and PR campaigns across uh, label as I mentioned but also events, uh, brand partnerships and, and license deals and, and across all of, those, uh, all of those campaigns and all of those teams um, I was frustrated in the amount of time that, that was spent on uh, regurgitating information around those campaigns so the information flow around uh, around those campaigns and right. it, and in my view people have spent uh, inordinate amount of uh, of time um, sort of wasting time on on, on that process um, it was something that um, that we, we were very hot on yeah. and I've been very hot on myself during my career you know the, the flow of information is crucial in terms of uh, making sure that your campaigns are optimized but I just felt like um, you know in this day and age it, it was you know it was silly that there wasn't a platform or or a, 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 a piece of technology that we could use that would really help. Yeah. Um, and having explored various sort of existing options from generic project management uh, platforms to obviously there are analytics tools out there as well. I felt there was nothing that sort of combined the two into an effective sort of campaign management tool and, and right. was able to, to, to save people time. Absolutely. So, so uh, did, did you kind of approach, uh, approach it from a project management perspective with a particular uh, sort of process in mind or did you sort of combine different processes together to, to get to, to this platform? Yeah, so, um, so we, we did come at it from a project management point of view and, and, and really the first, um, the first issue that we looked to solve was the one of of that sort of that time waste and and the and the communication issue that we were trying to we were trying to remedy right um, and and really having solved that what actually we've uh, we've ended up uh, producing is a platform that um, uh, um, has uh, a huge amount of contextual data that sits around uh, around the actual data and in doing that we've been able to bring uh, data to life and, and and one of our sort of guiding principles that we try and uh, make sure we're, we're sticking to is that we're, we're all about bringing data out of digital silos and trying yeah. to bring it into a wider a, a wider user group so try and make data accessible make it usable to people who wouldn't necessarily normally just focus in on just data right um, and really that sort of you know hopefully people who are using our platform can see that right across it from the way that we've tried to make the interface as simple uh, uh, as possible to, to work with, um, to you know trying to get information uh, across extremely quickly. So you know yeah. w- at a glance you can see what's going on in your campaign very easily. 
that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would imagine that a lot of people that listen to this, the show that are uh, working on a label uh, would recognize the fact that a lot of the campaigns now have a global sort of uh, impact, uh, mm-hmm. especially if you're talking about medium to a larger size artists. And so, so this is a, it sounds like a great tool to be able to monitor some of those activities across the board. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we, we, we have started focused, we've, we've focused on the UK first as our, yep. as our home market, obviously. Um, and we've been making great strides here. You know, we're now working with, uh, with Universal, uh, with, with um, uh, multiple labels at Sony um, and Universal, um, with a range of uh, the larger uh, indies. Um, and, um, and we've also started to work internationally with, uh, with labels in Australia um, and uh, labels in the Middle East. Um, we've been having conversations with the states, obviously, as a, as a market that's key, um, and it's very much in our, our, our intention that the platform will help to manage those global campaigns. Right. Really, that's sort of you know the international rollout of, of of the platform is is the sort of the next thing on our agenda. And of course, uh, talking about uh, music, uh, music is not actually, you know, I just noticed that music is not explicitly mentioned on the homepage of Campaign Amp. Uh, so uh, obviously the platform is uh, really uh, applicable to a variety of different uh, uh, spaces alongside music. So is this something that you're looking at? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're already working, I mean, we're already working in the event space quite, quite uh, significantly. So we work with the with a company called Think Flash, who are the, the largest event promotions company in the Middle East. And we've just been confirmed on a couple of campaigns with them outside of music. So we're, we're helping them with a 10-day science festival that they're running for the Abu Dhabi government. Um, and we're also working on, uh, on a musical that, uh, that they're putting on um, over the course of the next, uh, well, I think that's, that's live in October. Awesome. So, um, so we're already working outside of the sort of traditional gig space with yeah. them. We've got conversations going on with a range of other companies about uh, about them using the platform outside of music, and and, and really, I think you know um, we're focused on uh, verticals such as as, as publishing. Yeah. Um, PR companies in particular have a um, have a, a, an issue at the moment in that they're having to very much um, e- evaluate the the worth of their campaigns for their clients. So. Yeah. A platform like Campaign Amp is uh, is useful to them in 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 doing that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we we believe that Campaign Amp is not just applicable to to music, but obviously that's my background and and it's the it's the it's the industry that that I know the most. So yeah, that's sure. why I started there. Of course, no. I mean, it it, it makes absolute sense. It, everybody's talking about contextualizing data today and uh, trying to find ways to relate uh, what you get from uh, something like you know a next big sound chart to. Mm. Uh, real life actions, you know, uh, yep. to you know a, a radio appearance or uh, somebody mentioning you, mentioning you on a national show uh, just in passing and that causing a bump, and so sort of that helps interrelate all these different things and, and bring the data together. So, uh, you know, I, I guess the, the important thing is for people to actually really work on it. So, like in the experience that you've had so far, um, how how easy was it to get everybody that was involved in the campaign to actually you know uh, put it into practice and actually. Uh, Adopt to the platform because you know that's that's a key the, a key concern I guess it, it it is and it was always going to be it was always going to be the hump that that we needed to get over as a business I mean it's no it's no easy task persuading people to change the way that they're working um, I think you know we have been able to do that and I think we've shown that we've been able to do that because we've been able to grow the number of businesses that we're working with and the number of campaigns that we're working on and quite honestly it's because we are we're able to streamline and help those individuals to do their jobs more effectively and more efficiently, that actually they're happy to work within the platform and happy to upload that information. And that is really key. And it's key, you know, that, 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 that's the, the, the key thing about our business. I keep going on about simplicity, but simplicity is at the core of what we do and, and, and really helping people to be able to get their information in, in, in a, 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 a quick and uh, an easy way. Um, I mean, you know, there's, not, there's nothing worse, and I've done it myself, than, than somebody, you know, going into a new platform and just be confronted by this overly complex, fairly scary, quite frankly, interface that actually, you know, just puts you off instantly. And yeah. it's, it's a real problem yeah. because people just instantly switch off. And, and unless it is your core task to really go after and really get into the, the nitty gritty of, uh, of how to, to manage those tools. And they're very, they're very good. You know, you mentioned Next Big Sound, great tool. And there are a number of other very, very good analytics tools. We don't call ourselves an analytics platform. That's not what we are. 
you know, we, 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 we talk about ourselves in terms of intelligent project management yeah. and project management plus. And really, there's a, you know, there are a number of very, very significant key differences between, between what we do and, and, and what a tool like uh, um, Next Big Sound will do. Um, we, you know, we're not out there scouring the universe for, for music-related data and bringing it all together. That's, that's not what we do. Yeah. You know, we work in terms of proprietary confidential information. Our platform is very much set up for that to, to allow people to only access the information that they should be seeing. Yeah. So you can only see campaigns if you're... If you're, if you set them up yourself, or if you're explicitly invited, that kind of stuff. So you know, there are, there are very key differences between between a platform like that and and some and and, and ours. Um, that's not to say that they don't that you know they don't dovetail very nicely because I think that they they do. And there's you know there's benefits to 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 to, to analytics platforms, and there's obviously benefits uh, you know to to a platform like ours too. So absolutely, absolutely, and and so. Uh Let's talk about sizes of, of campaigns here. Uh, so uh, the site is still, you know, still a, f a fairly uh, closed project uh, uh, right now. You know, you, you, you uh, people that go on campaignapp.com today uh, have to request a demo and then you know start getting in touch with you guys. And so, uh, what is your aim as far as the sizes of projects that you work with? Uh, are you looking to work mainly with the sort of medium and larger size projects, or uh, would you like to also be embedded sort of in in in, in the uh, projects of, of smaller bands that perhaps only have a PR company and a manager and they don't actually have a yeah. label or or have a different setup essentially so so no so I mean you know good good point I mean we are we are working with with significant campaigns and we you know we've to date we've we've been uh, we've been involved in 18 number one campaigns something like 67 top 40 campaigns so you know we're, we're working with serious level artists here um, but the way that we've set the platform up and the way that we've set our business up is really to enable anybody that wants to come and use Campaign Amp to help them organize their campaigns, they can do so. And we have a range of uh, price points, a range of uh, levels of functionality from, um, that, that will allow people to do that from you know, very reasonably priced at, at, at one end um, with limited functionality for exactly the type of campaign that you've just talked about, which is a PR company and a manager, a small team of people, yeah. um, right up to you know, big, you know, large teams of people working in, uh, working in you know, multinational uh, uh, major labels. Yeah. Um, and we're running campaigns right across the board already in terms of that. So, so now I'd encourage anybody who's interested, you know, please, please do get in touch. Um, you know, you're right. We, we are, we're, we're fairly, you know, we're fairly early stage, you know, ourselves having only launched, um, uh, at the end of, uh, at the end of 2013. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it, in terms of our roadmap, it's very much in our, uh, our, our, our near future that we'll be launching a payment gateway that will allow people to sign up using their credit card or their debit card yeah. and just get on with, with using the platform to help them uh, to, you know, to execute their campaigns in a more efficient, um, you know, optimized way. So, of course. Um, so yeah, yeah uh, you know, that, that, that's basically hopefully the future for us. That's great. And so, uh, you know, you talked about the UK internationally. Uh, we, we can see that there's a different emphasis on different platforms. So in the US, uh, there's a, such a significantly different radio market than uh, here in the UK uh, with mm -hmm. thousands of radios. So is that something that you're taking into account when you're looking to internationalize the platform as to how people are going to use it, uh, if they are going to structure the entire campaign around radio in the US as opposed to the UK where, you know, there might be only a few key radio points, but there might be a wider base of press that they need to hit. Uh, well, yeah. how, do, how do you balance those? So, so I mean, you know, in in terms of the way that we're we're going about building out that side of the platform, um, you know, it, we're we're very much around teams of people working uh, on the campaigns that they're working on in those territories. So sure. that the campaigns will be structured so that someone who's sitting at the centre of the campaign globally will be able to have a global view. Um, the teams of people who are working in those individual territories will be able to have a territory view where they need right. to. And again, you know, that, that comes down to simplicity. You know, you don't, it's, very, it's very easy to bamboozle people and give people too much choice in terms of what they're seeing. Yeah. And people really just want to get on with their jobs. They want to be able to log in, go straight to the place where they know they need to, they need to be working and just enter their stuff and work in the place where they're, where they're working. But similarly, you need to be able to pull back out to, you know, for someone, you know, someone like a marketing director or, or, or a managing director yeah. needs to be able to get a, you know, easily pull back out and get a, go, get a global view. So, so that's very much how we're, how we're going about building out that, that functionality. People will be able to work in those territories, but then be, be, um, at, at a senior level, um, uh, management will be able to be able to take a, a global view on what's going on. Yeah. 
Um, and I think, yeah, you know, that, that, that's sort of how we're, how, how we're trying to structure ourselves, I guess. Absolutely. And you talked about the fact that, you, of course, you're not an analytics company, but in terms of external data points, uh, what are the uh, key ones for you guys? Uh, you know, do you get, for example, external uh, gig uh, information automatically embedded or is it mostly a manual process? How, how does that sound yeah. work? So, so I mean, we've got a we've got a number of uh, we've got a number of inputs at the moment. Obviously, I mean, you mentioned radio. <clears throat> we're we're bringing radio and TV airplay information into the platform via Great. APIs. Um, obviously, the social the social platforms. Uh, you know, we're, we're putting uh, API information straight in from them. So, uh, you know, a range of the the, the social platforms that you would expect. Um, we are bringing in live gig information. We have a um, we have an API uh, feed from Songkick, so we're bringing that information directly in. Obviously, charts information from iTunes, Spotify, etc. Um, and um, uh, labels are able to hook in their iTunes data straight into the platform sure. via uh, via Connect. They can also do the same thing with their Spotify data. So, um, so you know, wherever possible, we're we're already bringing that stuff in. You mentioned uh, the US. You know, we're, we're you know we're already in conversations about um, bringing radio data in uh, from partners in in the US. Um, and you know, we, you know, we're just you know adding more and more feeds as as we go along. It's very much been uh, been a process of listening to the people who we're working with. And responding to their needs—that's that's the way that we've we've gone about building our business from the very start, from you know, from the moment that I, I I set out, you know, trying to conceptualize what our prototype product was going to be. I was out talking to people about what they wanted from us. You know, what what would they like to see? And we, we, you know, that that's at the very heart of our business and about you know and 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 how we've gone about building out our uh, our product. So and that will continue to be the case. That's fantastic, and uh, you know I, I think it's a great product. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't uh, actually showcase it during the show, but if you go on to on to campaignamp.com, you can get a flavor of uh, what the platform looks like. And if you're interested, you can always request a demo. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, Ian will uh, hook you up. Uh, and uh, uh, you know that's pretty much it for today. But again, it's uh, campaignamp.com, and uh, Ian, I am excited to see what's going to happen in the next few months, especially as you open up the platform to uh, more users. Thanks so much Fine. for your time. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Andrea. Really appreciate it. It's great talking to you. And thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One show. You can find it on digitalmusictrends.com. Follow through the links to the DMT One to One. And also check out the weekly show uh, that covers the news on the music tech space. It comes out every week uh, on Thursday, usually. And we have a panel of people and we talk about what's happening in the music tech industry every week. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week. And until next time. If you enjoyed watching or listening to the show and would like to find more, head on to digitalmusictrends.com.